Ladies and gentlemen, please stand to your feet and help me recognize the Honorable Mayor Tony T. Yarber. Great day, family. Y'all, please be seated. Uh, let me thank each, of, each and every one of you for being here. I'm uh, excited about the opportunity to address you. I want to begin, uh, first of all, by uh, recognizing all of you who represent the city of Jackson, the state of Mississippi. We have uh, many of uh, elected officials who are here. We have uh, members of the council. If you're a member of the Jackson City Council, we're going to ask uh, that you stand. I see my friend uh, Mr. Foote is here. Would you all help me celebrate him? Are there any county officials here? Any county officials? If you're in the back, we want to make sure that we can uh, see you. If y'all see them, make sure that we uh, can identify them and celebrate them for being here. What about state officials? Senator, good to see you. Thank you for being here. And ladies and gentlemen, we have a, a special group of young people that we want to uh, recognize, and then I'll come back to the front and recognize my family. Uh, but we've got a group of young people who are here with us, uh, and they were participants in an amazing event not long ago. Uh, they are part of the Yes We Code. They, did, they participated in the hackathon. Uh, would you all stand and so we can celebrate you? Don't, let, let me tell you what you're celebrating right now. This is a group of young people who uh, participated in the hackathon, left Jackson, Mississippi, went down to New Orleans to Essence Fest, and they racked up by winning the entire thing down there. So let's celebrate Jackson, Mississippi students. <laughs> We recognize y'all as uh, our future. We recognize you as part of an innovative, uh, creative economy that we believe Jackson, Mississippi will thrive and that, uh, that will make Jackson, Mississippi thrive and will make us exactly what we know we can be, and that is a destination city. So thank y'all again for being here. Uh, let me uh, recognize my family uh, who's here, and I want to thank y'all so much for putting up. Mama, uh, you don't see me as much as you usually do. Uh, you probably need to start cooking more biscuits, and I'll, I'll probably get by more often. But I want to recognize my family who deals a great deal with their daddy not being at home, with uh, the husband not being around uh, as often. But I think that you all know that this commitment to a work that is greater uh, than us is the reason that we commit to this. Uh, the things that you have to endure and go through that is uh, for a calling that is greater than anything that men could call us to. So I appreciate you for understanding and recognizing the calling that's on our lives to serve for such a time as this. And for those of you who have come tonight, uh, we appreciate you for your presence. If I did not call your name or recognize you, please know uh, that I'm grateful for your presence. I'm grateful for your commitment to our amazing city. I want to recognize all of the folks who work for the city of Jackson. If you work for the city of Jackson, please stand so I can recognize you. Help me celebrate. Thank you so much. Last year, uh, we did this down the street at uh, Thalia Mayor. Uh, we began by saying that progress is a 365 day, it's a 24-7 uh, process. We also said that the year ahead of us, that it would be arduous. So tonight, I stand to let you know uh, that I want to deliver a state of the city address that's not laced with uh, rhetoric, it's, it's not laced with overreaching uh, promises, but tonight we want to present the real state of our city. We want to present a state of the city that highlights not only our city's transformation through transparency, but we want to talk to you about hope, hope in the midst of our hardships. We want to talk to you tonight about realism, uh, realism throughout our city's evolution. As the largest city and the capital city in the state of Mississippi, we are asked more than we should to carry the burden of being the state's capital. 
and the seat of government without receiving any additional funding, without receiving any external funds that would substantially uh, um, subsidize those things that we have in our city, whether they be state buildings or whether they be federal buildings, but we are still the capital city. And we do as the capital city always does. We make it happen. We make it work because that's who we are. We're Jackson, Mississippi. We're a city, we don't beg and we don't borrow, but we simply come to work every day with the understanding that we have what it takes to get a job done. You know, uh, our city is facing some tough times. We're facing financial challenges that are not unique to just Jackson, Mississippi. But how we answer those challenges will prove whether or not we are unique in our ability to overcome these challenges. The administration and the Jackson City Council, uh, we've been working extremely hard over the last year, y'all. I don't know if you've been paying attention, but uh, we've got some of the best and brightest minds uh, that sit on that dais every week. Uh, we work hard, we push, we pull, we tug, we struggle, and we all do it for one goal, and that's to make sure that this place called Jackson, Mississippi, is better than we found it. With that being said, we made a commitment that we are willing to make tough choices, that we're willing to make decisions that may not be very popular, that we are willing to risk 2017 not coming back in order to ensure that we are remembered as statesmen who made the kinds of decisions that it takes to ensure that our city is better. <laughs> Last year, we entered the 2014-2015 budget cycle with a $14 million deficit. We balanced the budget, but we had to do it with fund balance. Uh, we did it with our fund balance, and we knew then that we could no longer use this antiquated practice of balancing a budget. We use a fund balance, and let, let me just uh, tell it to you this way. When you use a fund balance to balance your budget, uh, literally, what you're doing is taking money out of your savings account to compensate for the shortage in your checking account. The old folks will say you're robbing Peter to pay Paul. And sooner or later, you're going to owe them both. My brothers and my sisters, we find ourselves in a situation where we can no longer utilize that practice. Going into this fiscal year, we find ourselves in a similar situation where we have a $15 million deficit. I'm looking at the budget hawk right now, Councilman Hendricks, who is here, who keeps a very keen eye on budget. And he and I had a conversation not long ago about what we need to do in order to see ourselves in better physical, uh, fiscal shape. And he was very blunt. He said, we need a plan. He said, we can not afford to simply go year to year with a budget process that does not see us better. So we've begun that work. And our city is presented with an opportunity to completely revamp uh, our fiscal uh, debt management and investment management policies. We're, we've been given an opportunity to change the ship, to turn the ship, to literally do business in a way that we have never done business before. So while some people see it as a problem, uh, Senator, we see this as an opportunity. We see it as an opportunity to do the things right that may not have been done in the best ways. And that's not to say that previous administrations didn't have the right idea, because you can never uh, stand, take a stand in a place from where you have never sat. And so while we don't judge the decisions of the past, we do keep our eyes keenly focused on the future. And that future says that for the upcoming fiscal year, we have decided that we would uh, take on a priority budgeting methodology. And that by doing this, we understand that this process forces us to make judgments based on science and not nuance. It forces us to make uh, decisions about our budget that's based on an assessment of the facts and not our feelings. Why should you? have to make decisions about your budget based on your bottom line, and the city makes decisions based on its budget 
when you don't have to do, when we don't do the same thing that you, we're asking you to do. So no one, no one should be asked in this city to shoulder what the city won't shoulder itself. Uh, not many years ago, at our house, Councilman Hendricks, you've heard the story, we didn't have cable TV for about three years. We only had one income coming in, and we had to make a decision that it was either cable or it was the lights. <laughs> I, I know many of you have never had to make that kind of a decision. Uh, but for those of you who understand, you understand that what you were doing was called priority budgeting. You looked at your priorities and your budget had to match what those priorities said. And so for your city to do anything differently, it is disingenuous of our efforts to be the capital city that you deserve. And so as we look to priority-based budgeting, we understand that everything that we used to look at as necessary is no longer necessary. That everything that we thought we had to have, we may not necessarily have to have. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we intend on leaving a legacy. We intend on leaving a legacy for a group of people like the young folks who are sitting at this front row. We intend on leaving you a legacy that does not say that we did not care enough for your future, that we didn't preserve it by being considerate in this moment right now. And so we've got tough choices to make. Tough choices. And while we have tough choices, it's our responsibility to know that uh, this thing called progress can sometimes be painful. And that if you're going to grow, that sometimes growth will cause you to be in a place where the clothes that you wear don't fit as well as they used to. And so Jackson, we're in the process of shedding old skin. Uh, we're in the process of being sure that as we do new things and we take on new challenges and we take on new principles that we do according to the scripture and that we do not put new wine in old wine skin. And so that may be tough. It may say that we're doing some things that have never been done before. My question to those who challenge the new things that we've done is, how did the old stuff work out for you? And if we find ourselves in a place where that answer is it hadn't worked so well, then our challenge is to do something different. So in this upcoming year, the city continues to improve. We continue to improve because we understand that improvement is the measurement. It is the ultimate benchmark by which people all over this country will be watching to see how does Jackson, Mississippi get it right. One of the first ways that we get it right is by ensuring that we continue to improve our infrastructure. For the first time ever, we have a plan that is systemic, it is respected, and this plan is one that will ensure that we see infrastructure improvement happening in our city for the purpose of the people who live here. With the passing of the 1% sales tax, uh, that you all did in 2014, we've seen now the commission that has given us the ability to spend $13 million of those funds for the upcoming year. We're excited about that because we believe that that money gives us the opportunity to not only spend money, but to also leverage opportunities that give us more bang for our buck. We want to be responsible. We want to be sure that transformation is happening. And with this in mind, the city is aggressively seeking ways that we can get external funding, ways that we can leverage our other options while cutting excess at the same time. And despite our well-known infrastructure issues, we all know about our potholes. We all know about our utility cuts. We all know about water main breaks. But ladies and gentlemen, you know, over the past year, our Public Works Department has been working extremely hard. As a matter of fact, they've been working so hard that they filled over 35,000 potholes since this time last year. And I know you say, well, 35,000 out of a million isn't much. <laughs> but let me remind you that these million didn't get here last year. And as we progress towards the future, we progress with the understanding that the work that we have is greater than a one-year spot check effort. 
and that the Public Works Department has been working so diligently that not only that, that we've seen them uh, repair over 200 utility cuts, where they've recently uh, contracted out to see even more done because we realize that our in-house capacity, that it does not meet the need in terms of the rate at which we're seeing utility failures. And so for that, my hat goes off to Public Works. I want to celebrate the Jackson Police Department and the Fire Department for being the premier public safety unit in the state of Mississippi. I want to celebrate a chief who is called from all over the country to ask about how in the world do we get this fire thing right. So to the chief of fire and his staff, hats off. to a chief of police that has come on board and has been serious about seeing crime reduced. Ladies and gentlemen, say what you will, a 13.8% reduction in violent crimes is amazing and it is something to celebrate. Chief, we are grateful. <laughs> you know, uh, you can also say what you will, but we've got a great group of folks over there in community improvement and in, uh, code enforcement. Since moving them under the police department, we have seen this group of people flourish. We've seen a 131% increase in the amount of closed 311 requests for board ups, demolitions, grass, and weed cases. But, uh, uh, Look, not only has community improvement closed these cases, but uh, they're also looking now to moving into closing those cases where we have seen a backlog for the past five years. So community improvement, we definitely appreciate you. In the realm of economic development, look, the Jackson Convention Center said that we saw 2.6 million plus people come into our city last year. And in doing that, we are saying loudly that we are fastly becoming a destination city. Not only that, but the city saw 938 permanent jobs come into the city between last June and this year. Celebrate that because they went to Jacksonians. Between myself and the economic development crew, we attended 47, count them, 47 ribbon cuttings for new businesses. So while some may think that businesses are leaving, there are several that are popping up right under your nose every day. Through an aggressive approach and our commitment to provide the best customer service and transparency, the Office of Personnel Management has implemented a citywide training program for all employees. And if you recall, this was a promise that we made uh, when we first got in office that we would see that training took place to an optimal level. Not only that, we're proud to announce that another promise, a promise to bring a clinic into the city of Jackson for its employees where they will not have to pay for basic health care has come to the city of Jackson. Council members, we're grateful for you for that. And you know, I think it's important that we talk about uh, providing the best quality of life that we possibly can for uh, our employees and our citizens. We take it very seriously. We take it serious uh, to the degree that we believe that you are only as effective as a community as you are engaged. So our community, uh, I'm sorry, our, our um, uh, constituent services division has taken it upon themselves to implement creative ways uh, that keep our citizens engaged and informed. And they've done that by developing a more robust social media presence. And they've been able to drive the city's website views up by 286% since last year. That is amazing. Our youth and young people's program called I Need You to Make It has given us an audience with 34,000 young people over the past year. And as we begin to ramp up and partner with President Obama's uh, um, My Brother's Keeper program, we're looking forward to touching even more. Listen, our dedication to providing our citizens and our youth 
with more meaningful opportunities to succeed. It mirrors our belief that we must provide culturally diverse entertainment and offerings throughout Jackson. You're standing right here in this art center, an art center that features some of the best cultural expressions that you will ever see. An art center that features some of the greatest opportunities, not only for national and international expressions, but also for local talent right here in your very city. So we are a city that believes that as we move into a place where we become a destination city, that we move there by ensuring that people believe that it's something in our city to be a part of. And so that's why we are proud to announce what we're calling our season of festivals. Our season of festivals here in the city of Jackson it will be a period full of concerts, events, festivals, and fun for all of our constituency groups. And so no, we won't just have concerts for the black folks. And no, we won't just have concerts for the white folks. And no, we won't just have secular concerts. No, we won't just have spiritual concerts. But we are the capital city. We offer you everything. We're proud of what's going on at Thalia Mara Hall. Uh, they have been having shows since its renovation that are blowing the water, blowing the water out of that place. Listen, we have had sold out shows almost every week that you go in Thalia Mara Hall. That is something to be celebrated. <laughs> if we were at church, I'd tell you to tell your neighbor the hall is back. <laughs> you know, I think that our cities rise is doing a large part to the stuff that we've talked about so far. But quite frankly, it's due in large part, and most of the part, to just everyday people. Everyday people who are committed to getting it done. Everyday people who wake up in the morning, go to their neighborhood meetings, uh, they call the police when they see something suspicious, they put dirt in a pothole and plant a flower. Uh, <laughs> Every day people, like the young men uh, over uh, near the police academy who have committed to ensuring that they were going to clean up their own neighborhood, that they weren't waiting on community improvement. And even today, they were out working hard and their pictures are circulating around on social media and people are uh, tweeting and retweeting pictures of these young men, men all over social media. That's what makes Jackson great. We are Jackson. We make Jackson great. So we can't allow outside forces and people who don't mean the city any good to tell us who we are and what we're supposed to be. We are Jackson. We're Jackson. We're vibrant. We're connected. I, I, Y'all started, y'all want me to stop talking? Oh, okay. I didn't know if that was my... That means I got two minutes left or something? <laughs> okay. All right. But we are vibrant, y'all. We're connected. We, we, we are Jackson. Uh, somebody asked me not long ago, and, and I guarantee you I'm almost finished. Uh, that's my first preacher, I almost finished. <laughs> somebody asked me not long ago, they said, why are you so adamant about this We Are Jackson? And it only seems like you're just talking to Jackson. Uh, why aren't you talking to folks outside of Jackson? You need to speak more to them. And I said, people outside of Jackson aren't our problem. It is a poor dog that won't wag its own tail. And when there is no pride in self, that's why I say we are Jackson. That's why I say we are connected. That's why I say we are vibrant, we are committed, we are prosperous. That's why we believe that we are the group of people in this moment, in this time, who will see our city turn around in ways that we've never been turned around before. We, you know, as we strive to become a more innovative city, I uh, talked to you earlier about Yes We Code. We recently hosted an event in our city, Tech Jackson, where we literally had folks from the very heart of the innovation community in our city 
telling us how Jackson, Mississippi has the opportunity to become the next Silicon Valley. And I continue to look to this group of people to my left because, y'all, we need you to make it. We need you to make it because they say we won't. We need you to make it. We need you to make it because even with the budget, with the $15 million deficit, we need you to make it because when we get out of this hole, we need to be sure that we're passing a baton to a group of young people who are more innovative and smarter than us who will ensure that we are never here again. And while as a city we struggle, uh, whether it is bringing in external funds, or uh, whether it's getting a hold of property crimes, or uh, whether it's regaining the lives of our brothers and sisters who, who lose them to violent crime every day, we need y'all to make it. We need you to be successful. And we need you not to settle for just being good. Because Jim Collins says that good is the enemy of great. So we need you to believe in yourselves like we believe in you. We need you to believe that although we have our flaws, although we have our issues as a city, that if we believe in what we have, we'll make it. Not only will we make it, but we will be great. Not only will, be, we, will we be great, but we will lead and we will model and we will be the example for how a city like Jackson can go from the ashes to being the zenith of what productivity and progress looks like. So while we have our issues, please know that we're not just full of rhetoric, pump, circumstance, and inspiration. We have a plan. Our plan is simple. We are getting ready to deploy a financial plan that, is, that we're calling our financial resiliency plan. This financial resiliency plan, it includes three critical stages. The first stage is what's called bridging. For those of you who are in finance, you understand this language. Where we will assess our financial situation. And not only that, we will determine the state of our financial distress. And we'll use this stage to create short-term solutions to prevent any further fiscal bleeding. And the administration and council have already begun to identify the most immediate causes of our financial distress. And we are in the process of implementing fiscal first aid and a comprehensive fiscal health model through the newly implemented priority budgeting process. Stage two is what's called reformation. It's when the city carries out the short-term recovery plan while planning for the future. We believe that this process gets us in a situation to not only stop what's wrong, but also plan to ensure that resiliency is in our future and that we don't have to deal with these kinds of things again. And finally, the third stage is transformation. Transformation is when the city of Jackson will institutionalize long-term financial planning while becoming more resistant to financial distress and able to adapt a child to a changing environment. In short, these three stages will help us achieve a state of financial resiliency in regards to fiscal management, debt management, and our investment policies and procedures. Family, uh, change is not easy. As a matter of fact, change is probably the most resented piece of evolution that has ever been witnessed. But we're not afraid. We're not afraid of what they say or who they send. We're not afraid. We're not afraid because we understand that it is our moment, it's our time to show that this great city will survive. And not only will we survive, we will meet and exceed every goal that has been put in front of us. Thank you so much for being here. God bless you, and we appreciate your opportun the opportunity to represent you.